they took over whatever role I had before 2018. I spent my time trying to figure out how to minimize the losses. Hi everyone, my name is Kian Ming. You may know me as the former Member of Parliament for Bangi. And together with me is the former Member of Parliament for Damansara, my good friend Tony Pua. So Tony, how have you been? Very good. Uh, how has uh, post-frontline uh, politics uh, been treating you? Very well, actually. For those of you who may not know, uh, Tony is a very good golfer. He's now, you know, uh, handicapped around 10. On a good day, maybe 7. <laughs> the reason why we're having this three-parter is so that we can talk about policies, not politics, although politics will come into it. Uh, and we are going to divide these three parts into the following sections. The first section will be on the policies that we tried to put in place while we were in government under the Pakatan Harapan government in, from 2018 to 2020. Let's start the ball rolling with the GST, the Goods and Services Tax. It was something that we campaigned heavily against uh, in the lead up to the 2018 general elections. And then, uh, you know, when we became government, we got rid of it. That was one of the first things that Dr. Mahate did as Prime Minister. Uh, and this was before uh, other members of cabinet were appointed. So Tony, do you think, you know, in uh, retrospect, that was the right thing to do? That was, getting rid of the GST was absolutely the right thing to do. I think the only question was the timing. I think there needed to be a bit more uh, gradual in the process. I think the abrupt termination of GST on the 1st of June before the rest of the cabinet members were even appointed mm. uh, was perhaps too uh, abrupt and didn't allow for the country's finances for the year to adjust. So that, that created some short-term financial difficulties for the government. But getting rid of it, uh, was absolutely the right decision. So you would have preferred maybe have a phase in whereby, uh, you know, GST would have been, uh, you know, uh, replaced with SST in the next budget, maybe for yes. the 2019 budget. Yes. That would have been more. That would have been more structured, organized, and less chaotic. Do you for think? The government. Do you think there would have been some pushback on the government to say that look, let's since the GST system is already there. Why not reduce from 6% to 4%? Let, let, me, let me just say that this 6% to 4%, 6% to 3%, 6% to 2% idea is a non-starter. Okay. It's a non-starter because no, people don't seem to have um, realised that GST costs a lot of money to operate and maintain. You have to have thousands of people in the customs performing transaction checks, Transaction verification, uh, 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 what do you call it? The check and balance. Check the, 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 the payment refunds and, and, and stuff like that. That costs a lot of money for the government. So, so while GST collects more taxes, there's a break-even point for GST. Mm. Anything below 5%, it's a loss-making exercise for the government. Mm. So, so it doesn't make sense to reduce to 3%. Because essentially, you are actually paying more uh, to collect that 3%. That's, that's one point. The, the, the bigger reason, one of the bigger reasons, other than the typical inequality arguments, the regressive taxation arguments, is that it doesn't make sense for the small mom and pop shops out there to be collecting 3% for you and incurring costs that's beyond the tax that they are actually collecting on your behalf. The systems let, and all let, let me Let me just give you an example. Um, to, to qualify uh, for GST taxation, that means if you have revenue above 500,000, you must be registered and collect GST. Now let's assume 500,000, 6% GST. That's 30,000 ringgit a year of taxes are collecting for the government. Mm. That works out to 2,500 ringgit a month I'm collecting for the government. But to collect that 2,500 ringgit for you, I have to employ a proper accounts clerk now. I cannot do my own accounting because I make into mistakes, I get penalised, I get fined, I may be put into jail even. Okay? I need to have a proper GST accounting system. Mm -hmm. I need to have my auditors, they will raise their fees because now they are auditing my GST 
payments as well. Mm. And that will all cost more than 2,500 ringgit a month. But I'm, I'm paying out of my own uh, expenses 2,500 ringgit a month mm. to collect 2,500 ringgit for you. That, 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 that just doesn't make sense. Now imagine if the rate goes from 6% to 3%. Mm. I'm collecting 1,150, 1,250 yeah. ringgit a month Okay, for you, but incurring costs well above. Yeah, two, three thousand, maybe Two, more. three thousand. So it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a value destruct, destroying system, mm. uh, generating revenue for the government, mm. but costing the rakyat, mm. not just about the poor people, but costing the typical businesses, the small businesses, a lot of money. Mm. So, so it doesn't make sense at this stage of the economy. Will it be relevant at some point in the future? Perhaps but not at this point in time. So maybe just uh, you know, add on a little bit. Now the government is introducing the e-invoicing system uh, with the idea that this would make the processing a little bit more transparent and efficient. Do you think that this would help if let's say the government wants to in reintroduce GST, not now, but later on in the future? It will help. And I believe that even for the FMM, Federation of, Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers, mm -hmm. who are one of the biggest beneficiaries of a GST system. It works better for them, but for them. Yeah, okay? because they, most of them would have to pay a sales tax. That's right. So, so for them, uh, they are also coming up with proposals to have hybrid SSMs, uh, SSD SSDs, plus, right? SSD plus, yeah. using the e-invoicing system. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. So you, you improve the whatever weaknesses in the SSD system without having to lay the entire burden mm -hmm on the rest of the business community, mm. as so, well as the people out there. So one of the things that I think when we were both special officers to the then finance minister, Lim Guan Ying, that, may, that surprised me, I'm not sure whether it surprised you or not, was the large amount of uh, you know, GST refunds that were not paid back. Did that surprise you? you know, it ran into the billions of ringgit. I expected a huge backlog of transfers, okay? but I did not expect the amount that was backlogged, which it was, was over a, 20 billion. It, it was about 19 billion. Okay, it was about 19 billion ringgit. That's a lot of money that's in the backlog, and that's affecting cash flow of all the businesses. It's big and small. So, for all the manufacturers that perhaps are pining for GST at the moment, let me remind you that practical, from a practical perspective, it is, it is almost impossible for the Malaysian customs to be efficient in getting the refunds back to you within two weeks. Mm. That was the promise deadline. Oh, don't worry, you get your money back within two weeks. Mm. But it is not possible from a s simply because the verification process that is required and the amount of fraudulent attempts yes. at collecting free money, asking for refunds with fake invoices, yeah. okay, uh, out there, uh, like it or not, there are a lot of very uh, Smart people. creative <laughs> uh, Malaysians out there who yes. will try to, 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 to abuse the system. Sure. So they, they need to verify all this before the amount of money gets refunded to you. That's before even considering the, the what do you call it, the moral hazards for the government to delay the refund yes. to you because they can use that money, which is what Najib's government did, mm. can use that money to pay for other things, to pay for other things first. Mm. Let me borrow your refunds first. Ah. Hang on, ah. you, we are checking on your refund, but let me use that money first to pay for something else, give handouts, la, uh, buy political support, mm. etc., and delay refunds to you. Those are moral hazards that are in place, and those moral hazards will apply for any government to varying extents. And I, I think that you know, it's important to to realize and understand that even within the current context of the GST debate, I have not heard many convincing answers to solve that problem. No. Nobody has come out to say, you, you maybe e-invoicing a little bit, but you know, in terms of a systems perspective, uh, I, I don't think that has, uh, you know, not anyone in government or outside government has given us that kind of assurance. For me, for me GST at a theoretical level is a great system. At a theoretical level. But even at a theoretical level, it doesn't answer the questions of 
regressive taxation, the burdens on the poor, and the questions that I mentioned just now, how, how much tax you are, the, the small businesses are collecting for you mm. in exchange for the costs involved. Uh, it benefits the manufacturers. There's no denial in that, mm. uh, in that. But just because one segment of the community benefits doesn't mean that you have to load the entire burden on the rest of the country. Yep. Okay, so that's a flavor of the kind of discussion we're going to have in this part one. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and talk about cleaning up the 1MDB mess.